Well, security is remaining topical on your discussion platforms. And here at Join News, we're doing our best to make sure that we provide you with the best security information, conversations, and advice on how we need to not only relate to each other as communities, but also what we have to look out for by way of the signs, etc. So uh, following all the issues that have come about, uh, kidnappings of, of the Canadian girls in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi, and uh, in response to some of those situations, the actions being taken by the Canadian security agencies in conjunction with our own security apparatus, and the latest just coming from over the weekend, the, the British, also giving the necessary security information to their citizens who are in Ghana who also intend to come here by way of how and what they need to look out for uh, with the expectation that there could be some speculated terrorism or terrorist attacks in our country, Ghana. Should we be worried? Mamabi Osuabaje is having a conversation with international relations expert and uh, lecturer, teacher, and uh, Professor Vladimir Intridanso is online to speak on all these related matters with Mamabi Osuabaje. From, uh, in Kumasi, these Canadians. Well, before the kidnapping of these uh, Canadians, we had had the Takradi issue, we had had other. Um, news about kidnapping, some of which were found to be false. Uh, we have had the problem of uh, ISIS and uh, other um, terrorist organizations, news about them coming up from, from Burkina Faso, and then we know the Sahel area also full of uh, um, ISIS and uh, terrorist uh, organizations, activism. Uh, we had uh, Burkina, uh, what call it, uh, Ivory Coast, the bombing. So, so it's like the one way or the other, tension was growing within the country, uh, instability, uh, people not knowing what to do, and we didn't have a clue. Uh, there was a time the question was, uh, are the terrorists coming to Ghana? Would they bomb Ghana? Would, would, they, would, they, would they infiltrate? And a whole lot of things. But it looks as though the, the question was not properly focused. Um, we didn't understand terrorism. We didn't understand their modus operandi. We didn't understand what was going on around us. It looks as though the era of terrorism hasn't come down to us uh, properly, and that is why we are all panicking. But it's not real. It's real that uh, terrorism knows no boundaries. Uh, that Ghanaians were uh, recruited sometime past, nine of them. Uh, we got wind of only one of them, uh, but I tell you about nine Ghanaians were recruited by ISIS to go and fight there. Three Ghanaian ladies uh, somewhere two years ago were about embarking upon a trip to go and work for ISIS. They were apprehended in Boku. Uh, so all these things should have told us that, look, terrorism is with us. That's number one. Number two, uh, the spirit of indiscipline in the country, the spirit of corruption, the spirit of um, insanity in the country, all bode well for uh, such kind of activities to happen within your territory. So gradually, we, it's not dawning upon us mm. that we are part of the world in which insecurity is the order of the day. Is what has happened in Kumasi in terms of the kidnapping of the Canadians terror-related? It's not difficult to, to relate it to terrorism straight away because you need to look at the signatures. We really don't know whether even the kidnapping in Takaradi, the kidnapping of the envoys, you know, uh, related. We do not know. Mm. Uh, we need the security agencies to do it, we can do it thoroughly well. If you watch out, there are some terrorist activities or some activities resembling terrorism in the West which are not labeled terrorists. And so we need to be very careful whether they are terrorist related or some miscreants, uh, people just kidnapping for ransom or people kidnapping for rape purposes, uh, kidnapping for any other thing. Let's, mm. let's allow the security agencies to meticulously unravel the mystery surrounding the kidnappings. Mm. kidnappings. Uh, as we speak right now, uh, there are several organizations unrelated to each other, but which are... Um,
for sale or what? Are they going to be wives of uh, Boko Haram, whatever it is? These things are now being unraveled. And these are girls who came from where? From several other countries. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't gotten the information whether there are Ghanaians, but about 4,000 girls were, were found in Mali uh, who came from different countries. They are not Malians. And, and all these things you show to you. Let, let me warn that, look, we are in a century of terrorism, whether we like it or not. There is this huge clash of civilizations. The Judeo-Christian worst is trying to foist its values on societies that are not ready to accept those values. And one of such societies is the Muslim community. And, and they'll fight back. And that is what created ISIS. Now that we are trying to pounce on ISIS, they are diffused. And the logical place to go are areas where they could hide. And the Sahel uh, region, the Sahel belt, from Mauritania all the way to Sudan, presents a good place to hide. Mm. And Burkina Faso, northern part of Ghana, are part of those areas. And so it's a reality that terrorism is, 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 is today's kind of world. Mm. And, and if you look at it from that angle, then other related crimes could go with it. And that's what is happening in the world. From where you sit, if you look at the Indian man uh, in Kumasi who was yes. kidnapped, uh, the, the diplomats in, yes. in, in Accra, have we properly understood? Did we understand well and did we try to unravel the circumstances so that we're ready to face the future? I don't think so. kind of uh, security, uh, personal security, we leave it in the hands of God. We go for all night throughout, and we just don't care about our security. So when these things are happening, we say, oh my God, what is happening? For, where, from where I say it, it's normal. Normal because of the nature of our society, because of the nature of what the global uh, world is going. So yes, we didn't, we didn't focus on those things thinking that they would not happen. That's why it is a big surprise to us. Elsewhere, kidnapping a diplomat yes, is a bad thing, <laughs> but it's normal. Hmm. Uh, kidnapping two young girls, beautiful girls, is normal in that society. They have all what it takes to track and punish. Ours has come uh, as a kind of surprise, and more people are surprised. I am not particularly surprised. Hmm. I knew that they could happen in Ghana. We've made news elsewhere. BBC, you are on the VOA. Yes. Other countries are interested in what is happening in Ghana. What kind of picture are we painting in terms of the response? Because if you came down to Ghana and you talked to an ordinary person, we will cite the three girls uh, yes. who have gone missing in Takwadi. We'll tell you how our security agencies are doing nothing about it. Yes. And I guess as a foreigner, that will not give you hope. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 at times, I'm, I'm wondering why people say, what picture are we painting? The world is painting its own picture. <laughs> Ghana did not intentionally want to paint such a picture. Mm. It is something which is happening throughout the world. It depends on what the state has put in place to minimize its occurrence or mitigate the occurrence when they, they come. Unfortunately, we were not prepared. Kind of. But again, we've had nothing, we've had nothing. That kind of thing stampede the police and the security well, agencies. What do you want us to say? I, we haven't really, we had the CID I, boss I, come I, to say, <laughs> we know where they are, they were soon reunited. It turns out, you know, she, she, yes. she really actually lied to us. I understand, but it's like if you stampede me, I'll tell you what you want to know. Did we stampede her really? <laughs> somehow, somehow. Please, let us allow the security agencies to work. Is it not the fact that if the media goes to sleep, if we don't ask questions, uh, especially the police service, will simply do nothing about it? I agree. The, the police service will not not to do something. If they are handicapped, then it's because of you and me. Let us, I, the media, uh, you are not sleeping, but are you asking the correct questions? What should we be asking? You should be helping. How? And therefore, you ask the correct questions. How? Look, we, we did a whole campaign as Multimedia with the pictures of good. the girls which is, trying to tell people that if you see something, say something. Which we is very this campaign. Which is very good. But elsewhere, the media give leads. The media does not fight the security agencies. You fight them indeed when they are actually not doing anything. There is nowhere in the world where such a situation will happen where the security engines will lie low. 
maybe they don't have the lease. And if they don't have the lease, there's no way they are going to find the girl. There's, there's no amount of witchery or prayers that will let them find the girls if they have no lease. How could the media have forced Mami Tiwa to say we know where they are, they will soon be reunited with their families? Prior to that, it's unfortunate she said that. It's very unfortunate. Well, she but did say that. She did say that. But prior to that, there had been several media calls, several media insinuations, several the insinuations were so much. So when I heard that she was going to not tell the media something, I was driving to my hometown. And then when I came back, I heard what she said. She said, you didn't say that. This is part of what I think I call the media stampede or societal stampede of the, of the security agencies. No, at times, these things create conditions for the miscreants rather to have a leeway. They are very happy that the media is fighting the police or security agency. They are very happy that the, the security agencies are confused. They are very, in fact, they, they, will, be, they will be laughing and, and covering their, their tracks. So all I'm pleading to Ghanaians and to the media especially, let's help the police, let's help the other agencies, whatever we have. And see, elsewhere, the media is the conduit for proper intelligence gathering. Mm -hmm. Proper intelligence gathering. In fact, a lot of them work on pay for the security agencies. Unfortunately, I don't well, think that is happening in Ghana. Well, because here, <laughs> the, the service... brought in the Americans, the arson, what not, everything died because they had ways of trying to give us the leads. So let us help them, let us give them the leads. They have everything what it takes to at least unravel the situation. But Ghana being what it is, mind you, in several places so, are we sure some people are not hiding the truth somewhere? Are you sure some people are not supporting this? One way or the other, be it As political. Local people. Local people, local people. Somebody hasn't seen that. Just, just to make it seem like the place is insecure. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's possible. I'm not saying it's happening. But I haven't seen $10,000 before. Right? Suppose you keep these guys for two days and get $10,000. I would do it somehow. I'm not saying that's the truth. But it's possible within our setup where corruption is at its highest. Mm. And, and, and uh, patriotism is dead in Ghana. So this could well, you know, be political. It could be political. It could. Why not? I mean, if you really want to make uh, Ghana look ungovernable, Ghana look bad in the eyes of the population and in the eyes of the international community, I mean, you, you could always do something to disturb a government. I'm not saying it's happening. But supposing somebody wants to make a Kufuado, another Kufuado, a drunk for his excellency, look bad in the eyes mm. for the next election. Or supposing uh, somebody without his party even has the way without to make it uh, ungovernable. Mm. As we speak right now, there is a possibility that big, big, big businesses are thinking of, you know, the influx of their monies and businesses to take their monies out of Ghana. But has this happened before? I mean, is there history to this? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. During the period of the revolution, Ghana lost a lot. Ghana lost a lot. Ghana was uh, labeled as a country where whatever, it, and, and conscious effort was made by the IMF and the World Bank to make people leave Ghana before we turn 180 degrees and say, we're coming, we beg you. It's, it's normally done just, just to, in, in um, Uganda, 
the opposition intentionally did all it could to make Museveni look uh, so bad. You know, so, so these things happen. I'm not saying this, that's what is happening, mm. but it could be anything. That's what I'm saying. Let us allow the intelligence agencies, number one. Number two, the police. Let's help them. So I, let, I, let, let's look at the statement that they've issued in connection with these uh, Canadians and the fact that, uh, as, as Ghanaian, I'm just fascinated by the kind of response that yes. the Canadians yes. and the attention that you're giving to this. Yes. Um, the high commissioner going to Kumasi right. and other officials. Yes. Yes. Then we know that there are Canadians actually coming from Canada to right. Ghana to yes. help. Yes. I mean, does it go to tell the story of how handicapped we are so that if our own goes missing, then we can't help ourselves? Oh, absolutely. That's not the picture. Look, diplomacy is very beautiful. The Canadian High Commissioner here has the duty to cater for its, uh, the Canadian citizens here. All right? And so when anything one of them, one, just one. He has everything to try and make sure that that person is safe. So when any such things happen, they will have to report back home. They will have to complain to our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They will have to ensure that they help the Ghanaian authorities to find their the kith and king. The Ghanaian authorities that don't, don't have to tell us, hey, Ghana, this is what is happening. If you are a Ghanaian and you are in Britain, if something happens to you, our Ghanaian High Commissioner over there has a duty towards you. But the British authorities only have to help to find you. They wouldn't tell the British people, Britain is a bad place, don't go there. So what has happened is such that the High Commissioners and British, the Canadians, France, all of them will follow. That doesn't mean we should also tell the whole world that Ghana is bad. No, we don't have to do that. They will have to say that, hey, look, now Ghana is gradually falling into the, uh, you know, abyss, falling into the category of countries that are dangerous to travel mm -hmm. to, and which is normal. But the media will certainly report. Oh, yes, the reporting and, that. And so they will report on uh, Canada issuing this, yes. UK issuing this. Go to us about that. You know, so what should the Ghanaians, you know, as I listen to these alerts, what, what, what should I, where should I be picking my pointers from as a Ghanaian? Watch out. You pick it from there, you announce. But note it, excuse me, it will be stupid of the Ghanaian government to create a situation of panic by saying, hey, to our country, be very careful, my country. No, no, no country would do that. No country would do that. The only thing is that they would appeal to us to help ensure security in the country. Do they owe us any, any assurances as Ghanaians living in Ghana? They do, they do. The Ghana government uh, owes us uh, uh, a duty. To, to alert us about whatever is happening, to appeal to us to be calm, to appeal to us to, you know, help. The, the, the thing is that we all need to help. But that they would announce that, hey, look, the Canadians have been kidnapped. Uh, the triggers have not been found. So our country is, no, 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 you don't do that. You do that, you create panic, you create insecurity, you create insanity. When you do that, it's like other miscreants. I'm a thief, I'm an armed robber. And you, your government, you are announcing that there is insanity. Come on, I mean, this but, is... But I, I find it a bit upsetting that the Ghana Police Service issued a detailed statement on the, the Canadians. And I have still been searching, my producers, you know, all the members of the team, been searching for a detailed statement from the police on the three, three Takwadi missing. Yes, that's very upsetting as a Ghanaian. Two things. Either they don't have anything on the three girls or they decided to keep quiet because that might botch their operation. I'm not speaking for them. That's only, only the analysis I can make. The details on the three Canada, the Canadian, uh, two Canadian ladies, um, I don't know. But I wouldn't have gone into those details, absolutely. But it looks as though they want to fulfill something. Uh, the Ghanaians are impatient. Let, let, let's give them all the details. We don't need those details. It is for them. It is their work. They got to go meticulous and, and come out with a solution rather than any details about what they're doing. They don't have to tell us about their modus operandi. They don't have to tell us about... We don't owe them... They don't owe us any CITREP, that is, situational report. Mm. They, they don't owe us. It is their work. They need to work just assuring us that we are on it. We will get them. Where we have reached, we believe that we will get them. But 
to give details as uh, because if you do that, the miscreants are also covering themselves. Mm. Let's, uh, as 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 we've we've been speaking, there's a statement that's been issued by the African Center for so security, security and. Uh, Counterterrorism. They're actually asking security agencies in Ghana to urgently regulate the entry of foreign numbered cars into the country and engage existing users with the relevant regulatory frameworks. The center says foreign numbered cars have become more prevalent lately, and this disrupts public confidence to own the process of the fight against the commission of crimes such as armed financial uh, fraud, smuggling, robbery, and kidnapping. Uh, it's actually contained part of a statement that, that it issued. Why I applaud them for directing attention onto these foreign whatever cars and whatnot, I do not think um, they are right in saying that or concluding that because we have the prevalence of foreign numbered cars in the country, uh, that is the result. That 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 result. That is the reason why we have this kind of thing on our hand. Mm. The, the, uh, ju the just to just uh, you know the justification is that it's difficult to memorize these foreign numbers. We're not familiar with them. Absolutely, because uh, globalization does not allow us in any other way not to allow foreign cars to be passing through. It does not allow us. All you have to do is to get your necessary. Um, um, institutions and the necessary gadgets, whatever it is, to monitor. That is where they have to drive their attention. There are a lot of foreigners who come into this country, they register with the uh, immigration, and that is it. Immigration doesn't follow up. These are the things we should draw attention to. But that foreign businesses, foreign uh, travelers can't bring their cars and we must stop them. They are not right. numbered cars into the country and also engage I existing are users with the relevant yes. it's not a problem to me at all mm. because the if you have a foreign number I've driven to Nigeria before and all you have to follow all the regulatory uh, or whatever it is that is before you enter and then you need to be monitored I, I applaud them mm. that look they are drawing attention to it so look at this but that is not the reason why what is happening we are having it might facilitate some of those uh, miscreants in mm. doing their activities. Mm. But then the regulatory author authorities and, and the police and all those charged with, uh, you know, uh, keeping the gate, immigration and that kind of thing, keeping the gate. Mm. It's part of, I mean, we have laws. Uh, and and they are, I think what they are calling for is to for the laws to be to be to be really obeyed. just in a few seconds before we wrap up because we have to make way for show business. Uh, the the residents of Takwadi, some persons demonstrated on yes. Saturday. Yes. They've actually given government twenty one day ultimatum to return the missing uh, Tandy girls, and they want the CID boss to resign. One. If the twenty one days elapse and they haven't seen the girls, what would they do next? If the CID boss resigns and the guests have not been found, what do they do next? I hate these ultimatums. It doesn't help anything. You demonstrate fine to draw attention and that kind of that is the that is the uh, indiscipline I've been talking about in our country. You know, you do these and, the, and as I said, the miscreants are happy that the government is on his toes. The government cannot find us. And look, people are now even going to find uh, uh, fight government. They're going to do even worse things against the government. They are happy. So let us have the patience. Let us help the police. Let us not just stampede. I've used that word one million times. Let us not stampede government to do what is not to be done. Dr. Vladimir and Chinasu, thank you so much for your You're time. You're very welcome. Always. Stay You're with us. Welcome. You're still watching the AM show. We've got beautiful Becky coming up with some show business. Enjoy.